In this video, I want to dive into creating a huge ambient patch and essentially testing out the CPU limits of the Axe FX3. I had a question on my weekly Q&A recently where somebody said basically, you know, how many blocks can it run? What's the CPU power like? And in answering that, I didn't actually play any guitar through it. I just stacked a bunch of blocks up and said, look, there you go. You can do that as an example. So I thought it might be cool to actually try to create a patch which sounds like music somewhat using the three. So let's dive straight in. I'll break you down uh, the presets so far. I'm going to add a bunch of stuff to it. So I'm using this Vibrato Lux model based on a Fender Vibrolux, which is one of my favorite clean amps in here. So we're going to use this as our platform for the main tone. And you'll see here, the I've basically gone with like the so-called Fender Magic 6 settings, even though uh, because, you know, those old Fender amps go to 12, uh, I should scale these, but you know, whatever, it sounds pretty good uh, as it is there. I have turned the input trim down on this amp and panned it hard left, and it's going to be accepting the left input as well. So this is like my left amp, uh, speaking in terms of the stereo spectrum. And then I've essentially done a similar thing over here, panned it right, right input, and I've turned the input trim up here a little bit. So basically the left channel and the right channel, EQ-wise are pretty similar, but they've got a little bit of a different gain structure going on. Uh, for cabs, I'm using two different impulses from the new York Audio Deluxe cab pack. I've got this 4119 and 313 mix, which is one of my favorite Fender IRs. And I've got a 57 and 160 blended together over here. I've got a parametric EQ block after all of that, basically a bit of low cut at 100 hertz, bit of high cut at 8K. And I've just made a few surgical little cuts in there to basically take out a bit of forum five and a bit K. And then I've got this new analog compressor block. This is what it sounds like at the settings I've got it dialed in at the moment. I'm playing a Strat in drop D on the neck pickup. So that's the vibe so far. What I'm going to want out of this particular patch is um, sort of like lots of wash going on. So I want reverb, I want delay, I want everything to be pretty diffuse. And then I'm also going to want a big distorted version of that as well. So let's try to get the wash part of it down. There's two ways we can do this. We can use delays and reverbs and time base effects after the amp, or we can kind of do the modern post rock thing and run it all before the amp, if you're familiar with uh, bands like Slow Dive, who I really like, you know, that's kind of their thing, run a bunch of pedals, run multiple reverbs and delays into the front of an amp. And uh, my bloody Valentine, you know, Kevin Shields is notorious for his ginormo pedal board. So I'll not that this patch is going to sound like either of those bands or anything like that. This is just something I'm going to want to hear. So hopefully it still sounds like me. I'm playing guitar, so it's probably going to sound like me. But uh, let's just go and add a reverb to start with. So I'll chuck the reverb right at the end of the chain. And one of my favorite ambient verbs is this Ice Castle reverb. When I chuck it in at stock settings, I get this. That's pretty cool. Um, one thing that I'm really going to want with this patch is to keep the low end relatively clear. So I'm going to add a bit of low cut in here. I might set that to about 200. It sounds like this. So that's kind of nice and clear because we're going to be stacking so many things in here. Um, I do want to keep it clear sounding. Uh, another thing as well is I really like pre-delay uh, with these big reverbs. So I'll set the pre-delay to about 80 milliseconds. Sounds like this. And I like that a lot. Let's have a listen to the difference if I run that before the amp. The reverb block is a stereo 
in and out block, which is cool. So the stereo outs are going to an amp panned hard left and hard right. And then these are coming into the cab block set to a stereo input mode. So this is all staying stereo so far. Let's have a listen to that. As you can hear, it's a subtle difference, but the way the imaging is working is a little bit different there. So I'll stick this one back, but let's go with a different reverb in front of the amp. So uh, using two reverb, I think is a trick to a lot of these things. And rather than go for like a super big ambient reverb, I'm gonna use something uh, maybe like a plate or a spring. Uh, let's try a spring actually, because that will be easy on CPU. So just chucking in a medium spring does this. So I like the sound of that. There's a bit of that spring reverb drip in there. What I'm gonna do is turn the time down, say to about 1.5 seconds, and I'm gonna turn the pre-delay. I'll keep it at like a multiple of 80. I'll turn up to 40, so not quite as much. And I'll leave this guy where it is. I don't know why I touched that. Uh, let's have a listen to this. I'm gonna turn the mix down to about 30% too. That's quite nice. I'm going to, well, there you go. The spring reverb's already got a lot of low cut, which is why it isn't muddying it up too much. That's really, really hip. Okay, so we have got two reverb blocks going in there. Now, uh, I recently did a demo of the Strymon Big Sky pedal, and a lot of people were asking, it's like, hey, how do I get those kind of sounds, you know, the swells and the clouds out of the axe effects? Well, the answer isn't to use the reverb block. It's to use the multi-delay and the plex delay. So what I want to do now is, I think I'm actually going to use a plex delay for this. Let's add a plex to, you know, get that kind of like shimmery, maybe not a shimmer sort of thing just yet. We can do that in another way, but just that big bloomy kind of reverb. Um, so let's stick in a multi-delay, not a multi-delay. What am I talking about? Uh, a plex delay. I'm going to connect it in a parallel row though, uh, just so we can control the dry signal and the stereo imaging. So let's go plex delay. If you haven't explored the plex block, man, this is... It's big sky in a box, basically. So uh, when we're running blocks in parallel, let's set the mix to 100%. And we're going to control everything with the level. So let's turn the level down. Let's go for eight delays. And let's just crank the input diffusion to start with. You can see here the decay times at three, uh, five seconds. I want it to be about three. Uh, let's just have a listen to those settings as they are. That's super cool. That's adding, it, it's a different effect, this diffuse plex delay to a reverb. Um, and a lot of the times with these sort of ambient patches, that's the sound personally that I want more so than reverb. So I'm using the reverb just to create like space, basically, basically to sort of like make the guitar sound deep. But then these plex delays are essentially the way I would describe it is, you know, they're adding that kind of like airiness and lushness, but uh, whatever, you know listen with your ears. I'm going to turn the high cut right down on that. And again, the low cut I'll set to 200. Sounds like this. So what I might want to do there is add a bit of modulation in there. And the plex delay also has this cool threshold uh, input envelope parameter, which will give us automatic swell. So we'll revisit that maybe in a little bit, but I'll just turn the depth up on this modulation a little bit. Thank you. 
Very nice. And, you know, the dry sound of the guitar isn't becoming lost in all of this, which I really like. So that is the Plex Delay. Let's add, I guess, let's add a multi-delay to all of this. I'll run it in parallel again to all of this kind of stuff. So we're going to select a multi-delay block, and this is going to do a slightly different thing. So with the multi-tap delay, there are a couple of different modes. We've got these quad delays, we've got a diffuser, and the diffuser is super hip, uh, and we've got stuff like the quad tape delay. I might go with the quad tape delay in this case, just because we can do a few cool things with the motor speed. So if I just chuck that guy in there, again, turn the mix up to 100% because I'm running it in parallel, I'll go for some aggressive high cut, same thing with the low cut again. Let's have a listen to that. And that was sounding a little bit washy. I'll turn the level down. That's really, really nice. I'm going to do a little trick with the motor speed. We'll set the source to be LFO1A, and I'm going to set the minimum to just be below one. So we'll turn this, oh, yeah, something like that. And the maximum can also be just above one. So it's sort of going to oscillate around that standard. What am I doing? 994, something like that. Let's have a listen to that. So it's kind of giving it this tapey kind of thing, which I like, where the motor speed's wobbling around. Uh, that's moving a little bit fast, so we'll go to the controllers section. I'm just going to turn LFO1's rate down. So essentially, we're modulating uh, these guys in there. There is a master section in here. Oh, where is it? Uh, we want to go... What, am, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Um, mix and filter. This is what I'm looking for here. So with these guys, we can choose where we want the delays panned, which is pretty cool, and also control their respective levels. I'm not going to use that. Uh, the time and feedback section, I was on it. This is what I wanted to control. So I want each of these delays to essentially have the same, uh, for the repeats to last as long as one another. So we'll have to scale them a little bit. So the idea is that this quarter note delay, if I set the feedback to 10%, and I set the feedback to 10% on the eighth note delay because the eighth note delay is fast. It's sort of going to like run out of steam quicker. So that's a two to one ratio. So I'll turn this guy up. Well, let's turn this up to 40% and we'll set this guy as our baseline at 20%. Then with the dotted eighth note, that's like a, you know, one and a half quarter note thing. So I'll turn that to 30%. And then this guy here is going to be half of this, so 15. Hopefully this works and I've got all of that, all of the arithmetic right. And I love that huge wash that's going on there. So that's using the multi-delay and the plex delay. Uh, let's run some more stuff in front of the amp. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this with the reverb. I'm going to move this one over, just one. It would be cool to sort of have something similar to these effects, but in front of the amp. So uh, what can we do? How can we be creative with it? Let's use another plex delay. But instead of that, I'm going to use a Plex Shift. So I want to make a shimmer style effect. I'm going to set the input diffusion all the way up. That's kind of the trick with so many of these is using the input diffusion. Uh, I've got. I'm just going to leave the times as they are. But with the pitch, I'm going to. We'll go an octave up on all of them, and then we will basically just have these detune amounts here, which will make it sound a little bit sort of more lush and wide. Really low mix sounds like this.
I like that a lot. Just with the quad tape delay, I'm actually going to turn the master feedback down to about 60% or something like that. So there's just a bit too much going on at the moment. We get this. So there we go. We've got the big shimmer. We've got the big wash happening. We've got some modulation in there. Um, one feature that's been added recently to the trem blo block is this harmonic trem. I'm going to add a little bit of harmonic trem to all of this. It does this. And I really like that's moving the way that's moving around the stereo spectrum. Okay, I'm going to add one more thing after the amp and then we'll stack some more stuff on in front of it. One of my favorite blocks is this mega tap delay. And it took me a long time to actually figure out what was going on with this thing and how it works. But I've got a block saved and I'll talk you through it. Essentially, this is what it does, this is what it sounds like. I'll turn some other stuff off in here and then we'll have a listen to what it's doing. So just so you can hear the mega tap, because I think it's such an amazing block. Essentially, it's going to... There's a lot of the stuff in here with the reverb block where I wish there was some like non-linear verbs, meaning uh, not that the behavior of the block is non-linear, but, you know, unnatural decay times. And we can get that from the mega tap. Have a listen to this. So that is a pretty crazy effect. I'm going to connect that in parallel and try to keep all the rest of the routing in parallel as well, just for fun. Okay, so now with some dry signal mixed in. And that's pretty cool. You can hear it sort of moving around the stereo spectrum and decaying in a way that a natural space that a reverb would be modeled on doesn't. So let's chuck all of these things on. You can see we're only at 70% of the CPU and I've got a lot of time-based effects going on on here. I haven't used any delays or anything like that yet too. So this is what we've got so far. <laughs> So a couple of things, I've turned the mix on the mega tap down. I'm gonna turn the decay time down on the plex shift, which gives us this. That's pretty cool. Another thing I'm gonna connect in parallel, this is gonna be super cool for more kind of shimmery stuff is a pitch crystals block. So I've got a pre-made block in here that I really like, uh, I've just called sugar crystals because hey sounds really nice one thing that i am going to do is set the what was i going to do the mix so i'm connecting it in parallel i'll set that to 100 percent i'll turn the level down and we get this It's a pretty cinematic kind of sound. Um, all I've done here is I've set the shifts both to be an octave up again, 25% feedback and a little bit of detune on each line with the delay times slightly out. Again, just to sort of create some space in there. So this is pretty cool. I think this, uh, at the moment anyway, we're only at 75% CPU. I could add more stuff, but I actually really like the way this sounds at the moment. Maybe one thing I'll add 
is a delay block. So uh, just so we can have some rhythmic stuff going on in there, uh, we'll just use a standard delay. One of my favorite delays, I notice I put the delay before everything else because this is just going to be in mono, is this uh, Deluxe Mind Guy. I'll set the tempo to a dotted eighth. Where's the uh, tempo? So 90 BPM, we get this. <laughs> I love it. I wouldn't use that as an always on kind of thing, uh, but I think it sounds pretty cool. So there we go. That is 78% CPU and it's just starting to get silly and it's starting to get a bit too washed out. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily have all of these blocks on at the same time, but I'll just play something really quickly and, uh, oh, should we add that? Should I add that? What I'm going to do after, no, no, I'm not going to do that just yet. We can come back to that. Um, one thing that I'm thinking about adding is a volume block to do some swells, but I'll control that from my guitar. So uh, yeah, I'll just play a little ambient thing and then we'll add some distortion. So that sounds huge. One fun thing we can do, say with this reverb block, uh, before we add some distortion, is there's a reverb hold feature. So you can assign this to like a control switch or something uh, on your pedal board. And then if you want the reverb, if you want to like freeze a chord, use this. For example, if I freeze this chord. That's so addictive, doing some volume swells with my volume pot just there as well. So uh, you can also do that with the auto swell feature in the volume block, which would sound like this really quickly. I know I'm getting distracted. I'm going to add distortion in a second. Uh, auto swell basically does this. So that's awesome. Uh, let's add a silly amount of distortion to all of this. I'm going to use a big muff model in front of this. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to set the tone all the way down because I don't want this to be too bright. Uh, this is going to sound pretty mental with all of this stuff going on. You can see here we have just hit CPU 85%. So let's engage this and see how it goes.
with that, I hope that gives you guys some ideas on how to combine blocks. I also ho hopefully uh, that has explained stuff like the mega tap block and uh, how it can function and stuff like some of the modes in the plex delay, the multi delay, and using reverb before and after the amp, using this twin amp setup uh, with a slightly offset sort of gain and EQ structure, and also you know just creating absolutely wicked ambient washes with distortion. Uh, and with that. I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to go and play a bunch of guitar with this patch. I will put it up on Axchange for you guys to check out. I'll uh, include different IRs because these are from a paid pack, but go check it out. Uh, Justin's stuff is always fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all around real soon.